Welcome to Phototripper Studio, where I share with you some of my image post-processing secrets. And I figured I'd start today with a really simple one, which is a sky replacement. And I wish I'd rehearsed this. I haven't rehearsed this. This, this could be a complete shambles. Anyway, if you don't know me, my name is Gavin Hardcastle and my main channel is Photo Tripper, where I go on adventures and capture images like this one that I'm just about to show you how I process. We'll just wait for this car to pass. Yeah, you need a new exhaust. So here we are in Adobe Bridge. This is my file viewer. And you can see that is the original raw file, a very dull image. But this here is the finished image. You can see I've replaced the sky because that, well, it just doesn't have a sky. And I've also changed the crop a little bit. So when I shot the image, it was shot like this. Let's double click on that and launch this in Adobe Camera Raw, which is pretty much the same thing as the Adobe Lightroom Develop module. So I'm gonna go back into my crop tool. I'm gonna to choose, that to me, that's too big. There's just too much going on there. So I want a smaller frame. I'm gonna choose a four to two, and then just push it up here to give it a little bit of space in the sky for that sky replacement to fill. Now let's click on light and we'll go in here and just brighten things up a little. I'll push the shadows up a little bit and that, that'll do us for now. That's really all I wanna do. Let's just zoom in and take a look at the image just to see if it's a nice clean image. If I zoom in here, by the way, I'm using my Alt key and then the scroll wheel on my mouse and I'm just zooming in. I can see a little bit of chromatic aberration there. You see that sort of green halo? Let's fix that. We'll go into optics and click remove chromatic aberration and bosh, it's gone. It's a pretty good tool is that. Let's zoom out with control zero. And I think that's now ready to bring into Photoshop and do the sky replacement. So let's click open and that'll load it directly into Adobe Photoshop. Quick swig of McGuinness. So as I said, it's pretty dull. I mean, look at that boring white sky. Nobody wants to look at a boring white sky. Absolute shat pank. So let's go to edit sky replacement and this will launch Photoshop's built-in sky replacement tool. And what you have is a selection of different skies. Let's just click on that and drag it out of the way. So already you can see it's done a pretty good job. So you can choose from the stock skies that it's got. So I actually picked this sky because I feel that it fits the image. And that's the key when you're doing these sky replacements. Don't go for some outrageous crimson sunset when your image is really a sort of overcast day. You have to try and pick a sky that matches the shot that you've already captured so that it, it looks realistic. But I'll go through a few of these stock images that they've got. So, I mean, that one, no, it, it just doesn't work. Let's have a look at this one. No, that's just far too dynamic. There's too much going on. This rainbow though, that, that actually doesn't look too bad. But if you go for stuff like this, it, it just looks like an absolute bag of shite. Don't do it. I just picked this one because I felt like it was a good fit for my image. Now, what you can do is load your own sky. So if you've got your own little collection of sky shots that you've captured, just click on this button here, search for the file that you've got and then load that up. But for this purpose, I think this one's gonna work just fine. So the sky replacement tool has some pretty basic but useful functions. Obviously the brightness is something you're gonna to wanna to play with. So I'm gonna push this brightness slider over to the right just to kind of match the exposure that I've already got. You could change the temperature. So looking at that sky, it's actually quite blue. So let's just warm it up just a little bit. And that just matches the colors of my scene a little bit better. And that looks pretty good to me. I'm ready to sort of work with this. The last thing is output. I'm just gonna output to new layers. So let's click okay. And then you can see all of those new layers are on top. So if I wanna switch that off, that group, that group of images is just off and on with one click. So that looks pretty good straight off the bat. I could just say goodbye and finish this tutorial now, but I, I wanna do a few more tweaks to this just to sort of balance things out a little bit. So the first thing that I notice is if you look up here in the top of the frame, that's kind of bright, but then the bottom where the sky kind of meets the foreground is a bit dark. So I wanna kind of reverse that. So I'm just gonna add a few little tweaks. So I'm gonna click on this top layer here that's inside the sky replacement group. 
and I'm going to click down here on my adjustment layers and get an exposure adjustment layer. I'm then going to push this exposure value up just to brighten things up a little bit. And of course that's brightened up everything. So if I switch that off and then on, you can see it's affected everything. What I want it to do is to just affect this sky. So I'm going to right click on that and choose create clipping mask. And then if I switch that off and on now, you can see it's only affecting the sky, but I still want it to only affect this area here, just where the sky meets the buildings. So what I'm going to do is click on that mask and press control I to invert it. Now you can see the mask has gone from white to black. So you won't see any of that adjustment layer that I've added that exposure adjustment layer. You won't see it until I brush some of that in with a white brush. So this is my white brush here. It's set to white. I've got the opacity at 100%, the flow at 100%, and the size is set to 2200, and it's a very soft brush. So I've got my hardness cranked all the way down to the left. I think I need to just make it a little bit bigger though. So I'm gonna hit my right bracket key just to make that slightly bigger. And then I'll start brushing here. And you should be able to see that that area where I'm brushing is getting just a little bit brighter. There we go. And that, that's all that I wanted. Maybe a little bit there. That's it. So if I switch that off and then on, you can see the effect that that's had. And I feel like that is a bit more of a match. It's a, it's a bit more of a seamless blend from that to that. So I'm quite happy with that so far. Quick swig of my meths. I mean, <laughs> Guinness. The next thing I want to do is make just this top part here a little bit darker. So I'll do a similar thing that I just did there. I'm going to go down here and add another exposure adjustment layer. I'm going to set that to multiply. I'll turn down the opacity of Spingerino. And again, it's affected everything, right? I don't want it to do that. I want it to just affect the sky. So I'll right click, create clipping mask. And then I want to invert it just like I did before. Control I, you see it switched from white to black. So now you won't see any of that adjustment until I brush it in with the white brush. So again, I'll click up here and I'll start to brush in that darker exposure adjustment layer. And that is having quite a nice effect there. I like that. Okay, so now looking at this, the sky is kind of contrasty but the buildings there, and the earth and the mountain, it's not that contrasty. So I want to add a little bit more contrast to that foreground. So not the sky, just the foreground. So let's go back down to this background layer and I'm gonna add a curves adjustment layer for that. So I'll add curves, just pull this up here. So if I click this point here and push that to my left, you can see that that is making the brights a bit brighter. And then if I click down here, Click on this point and pull it to the right. That is going to make my shadows a bit darker. So there's a nice little bit of a contrast bunch there. And if I click in the middle, I can either boost my midtones or take them down. I think in this case, I'll just boost them a little bit. And that looks pretty good. It's a very subtle contrast curve. Let's switch it off and then on again, off and then on again. I quite like that. The next thing I've got to do is look at this. What, what I'm so sloppy. Look at that. That's my camera bag, <laughs> sloppy. So I've got to clone that out. So I don't fancy my chances of cloning out just the camera bag. I think I'm probably better off just cloning out the entire thing. So let's click up here, get the spot healing brush with a content aware fill. And I'm just gonna click on that, brush around the whole bench with the camera bag on it and just take it out. And that looks pretty good to me, I'm happy with that. Let's zoom out with control zero, nice. Now I think the last thing that I need to do just to make this foreground, or you could call it a background, blend a little bit better with the sky is I want to desaturate it a little bit. So let's click up here, add a new vibrance adjustment layer and just pull that vibrance slider down just a little bit. So if I switch that off, now you look at this area here where the buildings are, it's got a bit of color if I switch it on again. That's a bit flatter, which to me matches what's going on in the sky a little bit better. Now, one last thing that I could do just to make this sky replacement a bit more of a natural blend is click at the top there where it's, it's the group. That's the actual group. So if I switch that off and then back on again, you can see that's the entire group that constitutes that sky replacement. 
and just turn down the opacity just a smidge. Let's just pull that down a little bit to about there. And that is now looking a bit more natural. Let's switch it off and then on again, off and then on. I don't know about you, but I feel like that sky replacement looks way better than the original white sky. It is just Dullesville, Tennessee. Switch that on. Now you've got something that's a little bit more interesting and I feel like that sky fits the mood of this location quite well. Now it's round about this time that if I was a miserable keyboard warrior living in my grandparents' basement, I'd be typing a message right about now explaining how I'd got all of this wrong and that you've got a better method of doing it. Thank you so much for your suggestion. I really value your opinion. Anyway, there you go. That is how you can do a very quick and easy sky replacement just using the tools that are already part of Photoshop. And I might just do another video where I show you how to do pretty much the same thing in Luminar Neo. So if you wanna see that, post a comment below, let me know if you're interested and maybe I'll put that together for you. So I hope you got a little kick out of this video. Maybe you learned something. If you did, please hit the old like button, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to tickle my bell and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.